My name's Chris and you're watching Font of Inspiration. Today's video is going to be all about my portable DM Dungeon Master or more generally GM Game Master kit. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. Now this is the type of kit that I would keep handy for all kinds of home games as well as portable games uh, at conventions, etc. where you really need to have a very small kit that travels well. Okay, let's have a look. So we start with the actual box itself. Um, I found that a tackle box or something similar is very handy for this kind of thing. Just make sure that you have the option to uh, make any kind of compartments that you want to. This one is nice because you can take the, the walls out from the middle and make it just one cavernous box. So, depending on what you want to do, choose the box accordingly. Tackle boxes, uh, small tool boxes, assortment boxes, that kind of thing, they would seem to work very well. So we start with a foldable dice tray. All right, and there it is. So I tend to keep my personal dice in a separate bag, but just in case I keep a bag handy for potential players who don't have their own dice. So, just a simple foldable dice tray. All right, then uh, a simple IKEA light, <laughs> just in case the conditions are a little bit dim for the DM, you can stick this into a laptop or if there happens to be a USB power brick somewhere that you can use uh, just for a bit of extra light for notes and stuff. Uh, this is the, like I said, the dice bag for players. And as you can see, I have a single colored set of dice and also a multicolored set of polyhedral dice. Uh, these colors try to mimic the, the old school box set color palette. The idea with this is that for very new players, it might be easier to just say, uh, roll the white die or roll the, the purple die, roll the uh, two of the green dice, etc. So instead of them fumbling around for a D6 or a D20, you might have more luck just uh, telling them what color die they're supposed to be rolling. All right, let's see what we have here next. As you can see, um, everything I have here is on a vinyl Chessex battle mat. Um, and that's what I use for mainly drawing maps and stuff. Um, for convention games or games away from home, I might bring a smaller mat or maybe not even have a mat at all, but it's nice to have uh, wet erase markers just in case. Now I use wet erase, a lot of people use dry erase, but I've noticed that um, they tend to leave a nicer line. I'm not even sure if you can actually use dry erase on, on these Chessex battle mats, but I prefer wet erase. Pick your poison. Next up, I have a few cheat sheets for 5th edition D&D. These show players the, the various actions you can take during combat. So for instance, attack, cast a spell, dash, etc. These are just so, if you're wondering, what can I do actually during a, uh, during a combat, these might help. There's three so several players can have them. Um, then we get to just a simple portable Bluetooth speaker for music. I tend to have my own sound system at home, but you know, for those games away, you might want some background music, just very faintly, uh, quietly in the background. A couple of erasers. Now this is a box that dice tend to come in, or just the, actually the bottom of it. Uh, the idea of this is to show when a character is flying. So you can do this with any anything you want, but you can have that to show and then put a miniature on top. Just use a die here to show that that character is flying. All right, it's fairly simple. Looks okay, it's transparent. All right, next, I think these are one of the most useful things in addition to the action cards or the action cheat sheets. Uh, two sets of cards describing all of the conditions in D&D &D 5e. Two sets because, you know, several people might have the same condition at once and be on the other, a different side of the table. So it's nice to have two sets. And these 
both these and these two sheets have been laminated so that they can take a bit of wear and tear. And yeah, for any, anyone who wants to make homemade D&D uh, &D aids and uh, accoutrement, definitely it's worth investing in a laminator there. They're pretty amazing. Anyway, moving on. Next up, just a couple of pencils. People don't usually necessarily have pencils with them at convention, so it's nice to be prepared. Sharpener. Uh, I'll get to these in a moment. These are one of my favorite things, definitely. Uh, but first, inspiration tokens. All right, so these are some uh, custom-made inspiration tokens of Etsy. I'll put a link in the description, um, and you can see where you can get these. Very fast delivery, very nicely made, uh, work really well. Obviously, you don't need uh, these kinds of tokens for inspiration, but I think it's nice to have something tangible that you can give to a player. And that way, when I have these in front of me, I can actually sometimes remember to award inspiration. And they'll also remember to use that inspiration more often. Okay. And I just keep them in this little bag here. The last thing I want to talk about in terms of my DM kit is the Pocket DM token set. As you can see, I have three of them. I'll walk you through which ones I've chosen and why. Uh, just know that this is an absolutely amazing company that makes these. Uh, I was inspired by Matt Click, AKA Fistful of Dice, when I watched his uh, DM kit video. I was inspired to get these and they do not disappoint. They're amazing. And I'll put a link to uh, the manufacturer again on Etsy and uh, you can get your own that way. So what these essentially are is uh, portable monster and character tokens that you can use at your games. The lid very handily works as the base for large monsters. So you just take one of these. I have in this first set, I have uh, purple ones that I like to think of as boss monsters and then just 15 regular uh, red tokens for, for large armies of enemies or large squadrons. So when you want to indicate that an enemy has been defeated, you can just turn it over and that indicates it. Again, you can use the base or the, the lid of the box as a base for larger monsters like this. All right, so the other sets. Uh, I have these basic numbered monster tokens in red, yellow, green, and blue. And then these white ones denote NPCs. So we have different symbols here, like a sword, uh, a shield, etc. And they're easy to separate because of color. Then finally, I have a set that's purely for player characters. And this is very distinct because it's all in gold. And the these have different symbols for different classes. Um, not necessarily just the strict uh, designs that D&D &D uses, but sort of general sword, book, shield, axe, hammer, staff, wand, that kind of thing um, that you could, could assign to different player characters. And the best thing about this company, it was called SideQuest on Etsy, was how flexible they were and how willing to make very customized sets they were. So the, uh, the, these, none of these are actually the standard sets that you can buy uh, that they feature on the Etsy site. But you can basically decide any kind of combination of different colors, you know, different designs. The normal versions of these monster tokens had uh, sort of check marks instead of numbers. Um, and I asked to have 15 in just Arabic numerals, and that was absolutely fine. And the same thing, I wanted custom symbols for the uh, NPCs and then the player characters as well, and that was no problem. So very flexible, very fast shipping, um, highly recommended. They ship from Australia, but the shipping costs weren't too bad. So like I mentioned, these have been very popular with dungeon masters like Matt Click, and others as well. And yeah, they definitely get a huge thumbs up from me as well. Very versatile, very portable, and just an all-round well-designed product. 
All right, and this is what my behind the screen setup mostly looks like these days. As you might have guessed, uh, most of the things in the DM kit actually consist of player aids, so they're not going to be uh, for me, but mostly for players to help them with the game, to, to speed the game up, to uh, give reference to rules and conditions, actions, etc. So what I really need here is just the, the iPad. If it's a pre-published adventure, uh, pre-made published adventure, I'll have the adventure on hand as well. But if I'm running a mobile game, I won't have the physical adventure with me. I'd rather have it on D&D Beyond. And uh, the dice, dice tray, and GM screen, or DM screen in this case. And uh, let's just... There we go. So, I tend to use multitasking to have both uh, Game Master by Lion's Den. I've introduced this app in another video, an earlier video. It's absolutely fantastic for this kind of thing. Uh, I keep that open for encounters. So let's see, what do we have? Dragon of Ice by a Peak, just as an example. Let's go through my D&D Beyond library there. Um, as an example, Shrine of Sabras. You can find that there. I've pre-made all of these uh, uh, on, on this Lion's Den 5e app. And I have all of the encounters. In this case, this one encounter here pre-made. Yes, never mind the uh, highly original character names there. I have a group of new players that uh, go for that sort of thing. Anyway, um, right, so here we have the adventure. Instead of this D&D Beyond Adventure, I might have my notes on Google Drive or as a Google Doc open, sort of abbreviated, uh, abridged versions of the session notes. Uh, that might be more handy than the entire adventure there. But then I'll have the encounters here as well. And this saves me a lot of uh, effort in terms of writing encounters down on paper, keeping track of hit points, things like that. All I really need is just an iPad and some dice. I could even do that electronically, but I prefer the feel of uh, tangible, real plastic dice. All right, that's it for me today. Um, if you have any comments regarding what you've just seen, if you have any suggestions as to how I might improve my DM kit, uh, go ahead and leave that in the comments below, please. And if you have any examples of what you use at the table that have really worked for you, I'd love to hear about those as well. So let me know what you think, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye now.